Hello guys, welcome back, and you're here. Today the video is about literature. I will narrate to you a novel by Oscar Wilde. The name is The Canterville Ghost. I hope you like it. Let's do it. The Canterville Ghost Part 2 Sir Simon meets the Otis family. The storm went on all night, and the next morning, when the family came down to breakfast, the blood stain was on the library floor again. That's strange, said Washington. Pinkerton's famous stain cleaner usually cleans anything. It must be the ghost. He cleaned the floor again with the little black stick, but the next morning the stain appeared once more. That night Mr. Otis closed the windows and locked the library door, but in the morning the blood stain was there again. The family found this most interesting. Is there a ghost or isn't there? They said to themselves. They could not decide. But that night, they had the answer to their question. After the family was in bed and asleep, a strange noise woke Mr. Otis. It sounded like something metal moving slowly along the passage, and it was coming nearer to his bedroom door. He got out of bed and listened carefully. The strange noise went on, and he also heard the sound of footsteps. Then he put on his shoes, took a small bottle from his cupboard, and opened the door of his room. There, in the moonlight, was an old man with eyes as red as fire. His gray hair was long and dirty. His clothes were old and full of holes, and there were heavy metal chains around his arms and legs. My dear man, said Mr. Otis. You really must put some oil on those noisy chains. I've brought you a bottle of Tammany's sun oil, which is very good. Everybody in America uses it. I'll leave it here for you, and I'll be happy to give you some more when you need it. He put the bottle down on a small table, then went back inside his room and got into bed. For a second or two, the Canterville ghost stood still. He was so angry. Then he knocked the bottle of oil onto the floor and hurried away. A strange green light came from his body and gave a long and terrible cry that rang through the house. But when he got to the top of the stairs, a door opened, two little people appeared, and a large pillow went flying past his head. This was too much for the ghost, so he quickly disappeared through the wall and soon the house was quiet again. When he got to his secret room, the Canterville ghost sat down in the moonlight and tried to think. He was both angry and unhappy. For three hundred years, he said to himself, I have been the best and the most famous ghost in the country. Everybody, everybody has been afraid of me. There was the Duchess of Bolton not long ago. I put my skeleton hands on her shoulders and she nearly died of terror. She has been ill ever since. Before that, there were three, no, four housekeepers who ran away from the house, screaming. Then there was that wonderful night in 1752 when Lord Augustus shot himself in the library because he saw a skeleton in the armchair by the fire. And there was the beautiful Lady Studfield who never spoke again after my cold fingers held her long white neck while she sat at dinner. The ghost sat there, remembering all those happy times in the past. But he was not happy now. After all this, he said, these terrible modern Americans come to the house and give me ten minutes sun oil for my chains and throw pillows at my head. 
It's too bad. They'll be sorry for this. Oh yes, they will. All night long, the ghost sat and thought hard. So that's all for today. I hope you liked the narration. Subscribe to the channel and see you next time.